What's the biggest bullet you've dodged in your life that you continue to thank the heavens for to this day? Didn't lend money to a friend because I was broke. A few months later, he disappeared with several thousands he had stolen from my other friends. My college girlfriend was a solid 10 out of 10 and great in the sack. Everyone thought we would get married, but I never felt like I could trust her. She never cheated on me, it was just intuition. I broke up with her when I graduated and everyone thought I was crazy. She ended up marrying a guy who was rich. They went on vacation in a foreign country, which shall be nameless, and she put drugs in his luggage. He got busted at customs and spent a couple of months in jail. While he was in jail, she liquidated everything and took every effing penny this guy had. Eventually, the police got involved and they got her on tape admitting the frame and other things. She spent some time in jail. He rebuilt his life and he's doing okay now, but it took years to get back on his feet. I'm keeping it vague because the news reports are still out there. Normally, I would say if you've got trust issues like that, that is maybe more of a you problem, but I guess sometimes instincts are right. Good on you. We were all set and ready to put an offer on a house. Did the paperwork with the realtor, signed the check, put down the offer. The realtor was super pushy, but the room was 90 degrees and we weren't thinking straight. After signing the papers, we got to see the house again with my in-laws and noticed a ton of issues we hadn't seen before. Got really anxious, big issues like plumbing, a huge wraparound deck that needed work, etc., but we were stuck now. Got a call the next day from the realtor saying that we never signed the bottom of the offer paperwork and can we please come sign it right away. We decided not to and are going to wait a bit and do this smarter next time. Don't rush when buying your first home, folks. Edit. This was the very first step in the process, prior to any inspection or anything. So by not having signed the offer, we didn't end up wasting any money. The choice. A. Stay in a dead remote town of 600 people because I liked, but did not truly love, the woman I was with after the shop I worked at closed down. She had a good income, nurse, but did not want to move and was fine with me earning less developing my own business interests. Or B. Break it off and move to a huge city and roll the dice. I chose B, and my girlfriend ended up fired for drug abuse, stealing them from work. I never suspected she was doing that, but she was making bank on selling what she stole, and I had an awesome time in Montreal. Was in Vegas during the concert shooting. We arrived a couple of days prior, and the stage where it happened was already set up. Every time we passed by the stage, my dad kept telling me, we should go back there, looks fun. While I was in Vegas, we went to a Golden Knights game and planned to go see what the stage was all about afterwards. I was so tired during the game that I could barely keep my eyes open. My dad noticed and told me we would go to the hotel to sleep instead of the concert. I in no way want to make light of that shooting. I actually knew people down there when it happened. But it sounds like you're probably one of the few people in this thread who dodged a literal bullet. Buying the wrong house. Put an offer on a house that needed some work. Offer was refused. House sold a year later for $100,000 less than my offer. Bullet dodged. Bullet dodged by you. Bullet consumed by the house sellers. Got offered my dream job running an offshore aquaculture facility. Had to choose between the job and my significant other's future. Long story. I reluctantly declined the job. A few months later, I heard the facility was dealing with a serious disease issue and had no chance of being sustainable. Had I taken the job, I would have most likely been single, living in a tiny seaside crap hole town. The job would have sucked and I would have only worked there for max three months before the place shut down. Was walking outside and thinking about how my class just went. Looked down and another step in front of me is a completely uncovered, open, unprotected manhole. I'm certain if I'd had maintained my path, I'd have fallen into it. I nearly got my wallet stolen while at Berlin. I had no clue about the amount of guilt trippers who try to trick people into pulling out their wallets. However, my friends who travel way more than me were there to yank me out of the situation and explain it to me. I dated a girl for about three years. I decided to leave because I thought she was going to get me in trouble. Turns out I was right. We were teenagers and experimenting with drugs. Anyway, she wasn't happy about me leaving and reported me to the police for giving her drugs. A good lawyer and 18 months of probation saved me from doing 5 to 99 in prison for distribution. The bullet hit you partially, but you are still alive. Grazed by a bullet that could have cost you your life. I mean, there are worse things in this world, and hey, a lesson learned. I didn't understand how tickets worked. 
There was a fee and a court date, and I assumed I had to go to the court that day and pay it there. Missed the court date. Went to the district attorney's office, and she looked right my 17-year-old butt and said, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reduce your speed. I'm going to completely ignore the fact that you were out after your curfew. I won't have a warrant out for your arrest, and you'll just have to pay a large fine. This is an almost literal get-out-of-jail-free card. Don't waste it. I wanted to hug her through the glass, and I don't think I said thank you enough. My appendix exploded. One hospital rejected me and told me to go home and use some low-key painkillers. Got driven to another hospital immediately, rushed for an operation. If I spent another day at home, I would have died. I could have also ended up with a major scar from my ribs to the lady parts. So lucky, but so shook. I dated a girl in high school who was super Christian and very much into purity culture. Every conversation we had somehow wound up back at how she wasn't going to do it until marriage. I was extremely lonely and was just happy to have someone who said they cared about me, so I didn't mind. She dumped me our freshman year of college. We went to the same school since she didn't get into the prestigious Christian college she wanted. About a month later, one of her friends called me and wants to talk. I'm glad she did because it gave me some closure. As it turns out, my now ex was getting spit-roasted on the regular by most of the C's at her job, plus her boss and many others. Turns out she was dating me to maintain her country Christian girl image. Everything that came out of her mouth was a lie, and everything that went into it was a D. She ended up married to meth-head ex-soldier who threatened to kill me if I ever contacted her again. I hadn't talked to her since we broke up. Now she's a single mom who works as a waitress and sells MLM crap while posting about how much she loves Jesus. Maybe this is just me, but your post could have just said, I dated a super Christian in high school and then we broke up, bullet dodged. I'm just kidding, Christians. Many of you are lovely. Years ago, I had an ex-girlfriend that cheated on me constantly. Due to a lack of self-esteem slash confidence, I would always take her back and forgive her. After what seemed to be a particularly final breakup, she asked to come over. I was reluctant, but said yes. When she arrived, she tried to seduce me, and I just wasn't having it, so I kicked her out. A week later, I find out she was pregnant. This wasn't confirmed, but I firmly believe she was aware of the pregnancy and was trying to rope me into believing it was mine by doing it with me that night. Although I'm sure I would have found out it wasn't mine, the emotional turmoil from something like that would have been devastating. Moral of the story? Think with the head on your shoulders, not the one in your pants. Death. Twice. First time I was 21 and was having stomach pains, like screaming and sheer agony type stomach pains. But I didn't think it was anything crazy. I've always had stomach issues. Finally, after a couple of days, I went to the ER and had to do emergency surgery. Found out I have diverticulitis, and one of the nodules had popped, spilling bile into the rest of the stomach and had infected my appendix as well. Doctor said I had about 12 hours left to live. Second time was this past year, around the scars from my diverticulitis surgery, I had developed two hernias. They weren't a bother for the longest time, but finally, late last year, they started hurting. Each time I went to the hospital, they were able to calm my body down and then pop the bigger hernia back in, and I was good to go. Until the last time, mid-May, surgeon came in and said, we're doing surgery now to fix this. Good thing, too, because he found some intestine had gotten stuck and was getting strangled and was dying. Said I was probably about a day or two away from having all sorts of problems, if not straight-out death. I hate my stomach, and it hates me. You ever just read a post and then you know that the person lives in a certain country that might not have the best healthcare system? Not that I'm calling any country out or having any sort of political stance, but we all know, right? It's a tie between leaving Barcelona a few days before the van attack, given the location of the attack, I most likely would have been there had I agreed to my parents' suggestion I stay a few more days in the city post-summer school, or the Tinder date I almost went on in Shanghai, got to the metro station, and was met by a guy who asked me if I was Hunter here to see the girl. If so, she's inside the bar. Follow me. I said something hurriedly to him in Russian, shrugged my shoulders, and walked away from him as if I had somewhere to go. I'd once slipped on ice and into the street right after a truck went by. I'd stopped to pick up my phone moments before. If that didn't happen, I'd be a flapjack right now. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day.
There was a bad windstorm in 2008 in Cincinnati, Ohio that came from a hurricane. Cincinnati is actually in the Ohio Valley, which means it doesn't typically get that windy. It was my future father-in-law's birthday, and we were trying to make it over to their house for lunch only five minutes away. The main road was blocked by police cars as a tree and power lines had fallen. No worries, I'll take the back way. I go a little further and have to turn around because another tree had fallen and blocked both sides of the road. I turn around and go another direction. I get to the end of the street and can go either left or right. The left is blocked by a cop car and another car just turned around, so I'm going to go right. It's a three-way stop, and I stopped first. I started to go, and the car on my left who just turned around wasn't stopping and ran the stop sign. I was frustrated but heard a creaking sound. A 25-foot-plus tree fell with the trunk perpendicular to where me and my now-wife were sitting covering all windows with branches. We crawled out of the car and noticed the tree itself is not only being held up by stretched-out power lines. If those power lines wouldn't have held the tree, we would have been crushed without a doubt. We just celebrated our ninth wedding anniversary and have four beautiful children, but it all could have ended that day. Too long didn't read, a tree fell on my car at a stop sign, but we were saved because power lines caught it. Hey friend, I don't know what kind of amazing parties your father-in-law throws, but I cannot imagine they are so fun it's worth going out in a hurricane. I was born addicted to crack, PCP, and alcohol during the peak of the crack epidemic in Los Angeles. Hours later, I went to a foster family who loved me unconditionally and provided me with a normal and stable home. Today, I'm a successful educator working on a doctorate and healthy as can be. Obviously, that could have gone very differently. I've built my career in creating programs for foster youth to successfully reach their educational goals, and I see firsthand every day what happens when you're not handed the golden ticket of a good foster family. I almost got into a relationship with a lady divorcing her husband that had two children. The kids were fine, but she never really wanted to leave him, despite everything that she said. She just wanted to get from me what she wasn't getting from her marriage. And me? I was just being strung along. Thank God I got out of all that. I got divorced after nearly 18 years of marriage. Under our state alimony laws, I would have needed to pay her 30% of my before-tax income for nearly 15 years. There's an exception, however. If she remarries or lives with a partner, then she gets no alimony. While the divorce proceedings were going on, I learned that my ex, A, was living with a partner, B, posting about it on Facebook, and C, had not made her Facebook private. Thank God, because that enabled me to very quickly and easily prove that my divorce should involve no alimony. I had a job I hated. It paid all right, commute was reasonable, I was good at it, the work itself was great, but management were complete a-holes. With so many positives, I was scared of leaving. I did not know if what I found next would actually be better or just different problems. I realized that I was a miserable person at home too. That's when I realized that I had to leave. Luckily, I took the leap. My current job certainly has problems and bad days, but nothing like that last one. Hey, you and me both. I won't go into what I used to do, but you know what's a lot more fun to do? Record stuff like this. When I was really young, I was pressure washing my driveway with my dad. My dad was watching the whole time, but he had to go do something else, so he turned off the washer and said not to touch it. Stupid bastard me didn't listen to him and didn't appreciate the actual power of these things. So anyway, I turned it back on when he left and ignored his instructions. It suddenly cut out. I had no idea why, and I was freaking out as to why it was only pushing out a tiny trickle of water and that my dad could be mad. I was trying to fix it, and I remember looking down at the nozzle. I remembered this years later as to how dangerous it was. I was essentially holding a misfired gun with the barrel right at my eye. I am so, so, so damn lucky that thing didn't go off for whatever reason. So lucky. As the owner of a power washer who accidentally stripped wood off of his deck, I can confirm those things are dangerous. But they are a lot of fun. Back in my heyday of being bullied, it all came to a climax. For 7th grade, that is. Still got bullied pretty hard after, lol. I was walking home from school with some people that were in my grade. I approached the stop sign, waiting to pass as there were cars still going, when my whole body was thrown into the street. A school bus was screeching to a halt, but not fast enough. I could see the distance closing in, and all I had was pure instinct. I used that push that made me fall and the momentum with it to force my body to move out of the way. As I rolled onto my feet, I could feel the burst of wind behind me and the smell of burnt rubber. 
The kid got a two-day detention, and I, well, I'm here, I guess, so I dodged a huge bullet in that sense. A girl liked me in eighth grade, but I thought she was just a friend, plus my buddy liked her. We had a genealogy project in civics class, and we learned that we were cousins. Edit. Typo. Instantly clicked with this girl on a dating app. We chat every day for almost two months. Finally met her in real life. Turns out she was a single mother of more than six kids and had the nastiest car I've ever seen. I gave up on counting how many used cigarette butt-filled Starbucks cups were in the back seat. Sitting on a bench in the front of a store, my girlfriend at the time had bought three things, hair dye, a bottle of liquor, and a pregnancy test. Depending on the results of the test, either she'd be dyeing her hair and I'd be getting drunk, or she'd be dyeing her hair and getting drunk. She got wasted that night. Bullet dodged. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.